So first of all, thank you everyone for joining this session. Uh, my name is Varinder and I am a qualified education agent counselor at OSIS Collins Street office. So today I'm going to discuss about teaching programs and career pathways. So once I will finish the education part, our migration agent Ali, he will discuss the migration pathways of teaching occupations. So first of all, I will introduce what is teaching. So it is a valued profession. So teachers, they serve a vital roles in our society. They act as a mentors, experts and role models for future generations. They occupy positions of trust and confidence in the community and bound by a professional code of ethics. So value of a teacher. What is the value of a teacher? So after finishing your course, you will be value, valued in this country because a country that fails to value its teachers fails to value its future. So if you are studying this course or if you want to study this course, you need to keep this thing in mind. You will be the future of this country. So it won't be on uh, for the sort of um, permanent residency only. You will be acting as the future of um, this country. So teaching and education in, is one of the most sought after courses in Australia. So let's have a glimpses of teaching courses available for international students. So type of courses learning outcomes and job duties. So first of all, I will discuss about early childhood teaching. So early childhood or pre-primary school teachers teach the basics of numeracy, literacy, music, art and literature to early childhood pre-primary students. Primary teaching. Primary, uh, primary school teachers teach a range of subjects within a prescribed curriculum to primary school students and promote students social, emotional, intellectual and physical development. Secondary teaching. Secondary school teachers teach one or more subjects with a prescribed curriculum to secondary school students and promote students' social, emotional, intellectual, and physical development. Uh, certificate diploma, bachelor's, graduate diploma, and master level courses. So the common entry requirements of diploma. So the common entry requirement of Diploma of Early Childhood Education and Care is minimum English requirement. So it is 5.5 overall bands with no band less than five or equivalent. You can take any sort of English test. Academic requirements are completion of Australian year 12 and equivalent and the minimum age should be 18 years. And some colleges, they ask for LLN test, which is called language literacy and numeracy test. So some colleges, uh, they want to take uh, LLN test uh, cleared by the student before doing the admission. And graduate diploma level courses. For the graduate diploma of early childhood, the minimum entry requirement is completion of Australian bachelor degree or equivalent in any field. English requirements are overall 7 with listening 7.5, reading 6.5, writing 6.5 and speaking 7.5. And if you don't want to take English test or uh, there, there are requirements which can waive off your English test, but that is on sure qualification only. So if you have completed two year qualification from English speaking countries, not only Australia, there are seven countries. So seven English speaking countries, if you have completed bachelor or higher level qualification from those seven countries within last two years, you can take direct entry into this course without English requirements. Bachelor level courses. So uh, first of all, I will discuss the name because most of the colleges or universities, they are providing this course with the different names. So Bachelor of Education, first of all, the duration of the course is four years. Bachelor of Early Childhood Teaching, Bachelor of Teaching Primary and Secondary, Bachelor of Primary Teaching and Bachelor of Secondary Teaching. Eligibility criteria to get admission. So uh, for the bachelor, the English requirements are different in every university or college. So the entry requirements are different. So minimum entry requirement is overall 6.5 bands with no band less than six. And the academic requirements are completion of Australian year 12 or equivalent. And uh, some universities, they ask for the Casper uh, test, language literacy and numeracy test. And some universities, they ask for land type test. And um, if you will see the entry requirement, 
it is different with every university. Some universities, they will ask you to keep, uh, take the Casper test before starting of the course. Some universities, they still uh, take students without Casper test and they allow students to take Casper test in the second year. In the, in the same way, this land type test also. also. Sometimes universities, they ask to do it in the second year, uh, but few universities, they ask in the starting as well. Uh, I have seen few universities which are just asking at the time of completion as well. So it depends where you are taking admission to meet this uh, uh, test requirements. And in the same way I told you for the graduate diploma, if you want to get your English waived off, the uh, you need to study bachelor or higher level qualification, uh, which should be two years and from the English speaking countries only and sh it should be completed within the last two years. In the same way for the uh, master's course, so master's uh, courses are masters of teaching. And the course is also two years. Early childhood teaching, primary teaching and secondary teaching. <coughs> Discuss the eligibility criteria. So first of all, in the same way, like I discussed in the bachelor. So every university has different English requirements. The, uh, I'm just talking about the general requirements here. So most of the universities for master courses, they are asking listening and reading eight bands, reading and writing seven. But there are universities who are taking with overall 6.5 bands with no band less than six as well for master's courses. And the academic requirements, it, uh, they are bachelors in any discipline. Some students from IT background, sometimes they do not meet the requirements because you have to choose two subjects. You have to choose the major or minor area of the teaching whenever you are taking admission. So according to those subjects, you need to provide the teaching capability statement. And uh, sometimes the IT students who have completed BTEC uh, from overseas, sometimes they don't meet the requirement because they are not meeting the requirements of the major subjects. Minor, you can choose any. The uh, universities, they don't mind. But when you are choosing the major subjects, sometimes you don't meet the prerequisites. So that is the reason universities, they reject these sort of applications, but not all universities. We can try a different university because every university has different criteria when you do uh, when you want to take admission in teaching. So similar like bachelors, the uh, the entry requirements are Casper test and LLN test and some universities they just accept without Casper or LLN. They only take the teaching capability statement, which is just a one page SOP where you need to provide them the uh, one page SOP why you want to study teaching and you will mention the subjects. OK, I want to uh, study these majors and these minors and then uh, they will assess your application on the basis of that uh, teaching capability statement. And just for the English requirements to be waived off, if you have minimum two year qualification from English uh, speaking countries, similar like uh, I explained in the bachelors, it should be more than bachelors or higher level and it should be completed within the last two years. If you have done that, you will be eligible to get admission without any sort of English requirements. So popular universities who are offering teaching courses, Charles Darwin University, Swinburne University, Latrobe University, Murdoch University, Curtin University, University of Western Australia, Australian Catholic University and Southern Cross Education Institute. So here is the fees. So uh, I have just discussed the approximation here because every university they have uh, different per uh, per annum fees and there are many scholarships which are also going on at the moment. So most of the uh, scholarships they are based on the basis of your GPA from uh, your prior study. So if you are meeting the scholarship requirements, you will be able to get scholarship as well, but it totally depends on your GPA. Whatever the qualification you have uh, finished prior uh, prior to starting uh, the bachelor or masters of teaching. The approximation fees is uh, in between 12,000 to 16,000 for the diploma and for the bachelors it is in between 22000 to 34000 approximately and for graduate diploma it is 20000 to 32000 and masters is 24100 to 35000 
and career opportunities, possible job uh, outcomes after finishing the teaching courses. So you can become early childhood educator, pre-primary school teacher, secondary school teacher, primary school uh, teacher, children services coordinator, family daycare coordinator, play group coordinator or child care center manager. Average weekly salary in teaching profession. So for the early childhood educator, it is in between 1400 to 1500 weekly. For primary school teacher, it is 1700 to 1800 weekly. For secondary school teacher, it is in between 1900 to 2000. And child care center, it is in between 1200 to 1300 per week. And here is the five years industry projection. So future growth is very strong in this profession. So employment level for early childhood educators will increase to 22.1% by 2023. So the 4% uh, percent projected growth in child care industry and secondary school teachers demand will increase by 7.1%. So the early childhood teachers projected job growth here, uh, you can see the graph and you can see the skill shortage. There is shortage almost in every state. So here will be the projected growth in this particular industry uh, in the coming years. So you can find uh, how this, uh, how um, the projection is increasing as the uh, as in the coming years. And this is for the secondary school teachers. Similarly, uh, like early childhood teachers, you can find that in every state uh, there is skill shortage. And this is the skill priority list, national shortage uh, list, and you can see the future demand, uh, which is very strong. You can see here um, it is according to the professions and you can see for the child care worker, aged or disabled care, uh, the future demand is very, very strong. And here uh, you can see for early childhood or pre-primary school teachers, it is moderate. So the demand is increasing in the coming years. So now I have pretty much told you about the courses, universities or um, about the uh, career pathways. So now Ali will discuss about the migration pathways for the teaching. Uh, yes, Ali, you can continue now. Thank you. And uh, one more thing I want to say that we have giveaways for you. So we are leaving everything in the chat box. So you can check the messages from the chat box and you can tag your friends in our OSIS uh, group. Migration and Education Conclave of 2022 to win this attractive uh, prizes. So you can find everything in the chat box. So I request you all, you can tag your friends so that they can also take benefits of these sessions. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Varinder. Uh, you have explained uh, them about the courses and uh, admissions and all the criteria. Now, uh, I will uh, I will be discussing about migration pathways. So before I start, I'll start uh, sharing my screen so everyone can see uh, what we are talking about. <clears throat> so I hope everyone can see my screen now. Yes, Ali, we can see. OK, perfect. So uh, my name is uh, Ali Hassan. I am registered migration agent at OSIS Group. Uh, uh, here is my, here are my details. Now I'll be covering a few teaching occupations uh, like you know, most of the occupations that were in there talked about. Uh, so topics to be covered here today will be teaching occupations in long term and short term lists, assessment process through a, uh, AITS, uh, TSL, visa options for teaching professionals, state sponsorship requirements uh, for teaching uh, graduates and this. Now, these are few visa options that uh, teaching graduates can get access to. It, it, it includes skilled independent visa, subclass 189, 190 state sponsored visa, or 491 state uh, family sponsored visas. Now all of these, so first two visas are permanent visas. Uh, 491 is pathway to PR. You can also look for employer sponsored visas in these categories so that and visas include 482, 186 and 494. Now 
uh, these are the few uh, teaching occupations that are currently on the long term list basically or mid uh, mid term uh, MLT SSL. Early childhood teaching is the most common one. Then secondary school teaching is there. Special needs teacher, teacher of the hearing uh, uh, of the hearing impaired, then teaching uh, teacher of the sight impaired and then special education teachers and EC. There are few other occupations such as primary school teacher, middle, middle school teacher, which are in the short term list. Now, few other teaching occupations are there which are not relevant to AITSL, such as art teacher, dance teacher, private tutors. So these occupations are also there, but my most uh, my uh, I will cover mostly occupations which are assessed through AITSL. But if someone has questions related to any other teaching occupation, including uh, that the one I have mentioned here, art teacher, dance teacher, or private tutors, etc. They can drop down, uh, they can drop their message, and I will uh, reply uh, to them. Now, first process is getting skills assessment. So, skills assessment is uh, done by AITSL, which is the assessing authority. Now, uh, the minimum requirement uh, for AITSL is that you must have completed at least four years of full time or part time equivalent qualification okay and uh, and that has to be at a higher level okay this must include a relevant initial teacher uh, education qualification and can include other qualifications as well so for example if someone has done you know uh, one bachelor's for 3 years and then they do another masters for example which is one year or two years for example and that is in teaching they can qualify for this so initial qualification or uh, you know all qualification does not have to be in teaching necessarily. So this is mainly for those who have studied something else and know they want to do one or two years course on top of their bachelor's or other qualification. They can uh, get assessment through this pathway. Now there is an English requirement as well. Uh, IELTS uh, you have to have a minimum seven. Uh, so it's there is sorry uh, one mistake. So it has to be seven seven eight eight. So it's not uh, eight uh, there, so it has to be listening, speaking, eight, eight, writing and reading must be at least seven. Or there is an exemption available here. If you have studied at least four years of full time in higher education in Australia, Canada, Ireland, New Zealand, uh, UK and U or USA. So we uh, we get a lot of questions like can they get exemption? Yes, they, you can if you have met these or one of uh, these requirements. Now, uh, please note AITSL can still ask you to provide IELTS academic score if they are not satisfied or if they have any concerns regarding your English language ability. So they reserve right to do that. Now, uh, of course, uh, there are a few other assessments that I mentioned, few other occupations such as dance teacher, art teachers, tutors, all. They are assessed by vetices where they require at least a bachelor's degree in relevant field and one year experience. Uh, highly relevant one year experience uh, is required in most of those occupations. So um, if someone is from that background, they can get assessment as well through vetices. They don't have to go through AITSL. Now this is a snapshot of point system, so you get points for age, English, your work experience. Of course, experience in Australia gives you more points. Uh, you can get uh, experience uh, points for overseas experience. You can get qualification points. You can get points, extra points for regional study. So like Rinder was mentioning that you can study in different regions, so that can give you five extra points as well. So. Then NATI you can do professional year is not possible for teaching occupation, but generally for other occupations you can get points from there too. And then of course if you are single or you have a spouse, you can get points from there as well. Now coming to state sponsorship. Now before I uh, start explaining state sponsorship requirements, uh, just to let you know that because it's start of financial year, most of the states have not updated their uh, requirements or lists yet. So what I'm going to discuss I'll, I'll briefly explain what states generally look into or what occupations they have sponsored in the past. So you have an idea uh, of future. So we don't have a detailed list for most of these states. So the requirements I'm going to explain will be uh, last known requirements. So to start with Tasmania, uh, you can either go through study pathway if you study there for two years or 
if you work there for six months full time in your nominated occupation and your occupation must be uh, in the uh, Tasmanian skill occupation list. Now there are uh, changes uh, coming to these requirements most likely, but uh, of course we'll have to wait for them to uh, announce those changes before we can explain you that. Then there is a subclass 491 option. If someone has studied there for one year from Tasmania, they can be eligible for 491 or they work, uh, they have these skills and they go and work for six months in Tasmania in any skilled occupation. That includes uh, teaching or uh, something else as well. Any skilled occupation level one to three generally. Now for Tasmania, if you are meeting requirement through employment, uh, you have to be uh, working full time, which is 35 hours per week at least. So you have to keep that in mind. Not all states, uh, so most of the states, they ask for full time work experience, which is 35 hours. So before you move to a state, make sure you are clear about their requirements that if they are looking for th 20 hours per week work experience or 35 hours per week experience. Then Northern Territory, so Northern Territory has, uh, you know, two. so the requirement is that if you have completed a two year study in Northern Territory, in this case we are talking about teaching. So uh, let's say if you complete two years teaching study and you live there for at least six months after completing immediately after complete, uh, completion of your study and you demonstrate that you have, uh, you know, made uh, efforts, genuine efforts to obtain job in NT then in this case you can be sponsored for 190. But the main condition here is that you must be staying there for six months holding a visa that gives you full working rights. So someone who has already used their 485 and now they are going to Northern Territory to study for another two years, they might not be eligible for this because they will not have full working rights after completing two years study. Now those applicants will fall under 491. Okay. So uh, and 491, uh, you have to be living there for at least 12 months and you have to demonstrate uh, that, you, 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 that you have a full time job for at least six months in your nominated occupation. So basically, if you have six months job in your nominated occupation in Northern Territory, you can get subclass 491 from Northern Territory. Now, you also have to uh, prove that that position uh, will be available and uh, you know em employer record must be good as well. Western Australia. Now we have seen uh, many updates from Western Australia lately. They announced new occupation list and uh, in in two two three weeks back I believe. So uh, Western Australia, more your occupation teaching occupations are on uh, schedule two list or they are on graduate list. Okay. Now for schedule two, if your your occupation must be on that list. Now most of the teaching occupations are on the list and you must have a full time employment contract in your nominated occupation from Western Australia if you are invited to apply. Now this must be from a Western Australian employer in your nominated occupation. Graduate stream uh, on the other hand is for applicants who completes at least at least two years study in Western Australia. They also have to provide at least six months uh, Australian work experience or a, a job contract in their, uh, you know, uh, teaching occupation. Now, these are the few occupations which are in the general stream list. So you can see almost all the occupations are there. So which means that, you know, you have good opportunities if you go through either uh, graduate stream or you go there uh, through sch schedule two uh, basically. Now, please note for schedule two, you do not have to be living in Western Australia to apply. You can apply from anywhere. If you are living, for example, in Sydney, they have also they are also opening for offshore applicants as well. So you can apply from anywhere for schedule two. You but preference will be given to applicants who are living in Western Australia. So recommended that you are living in Western Australia, but even if you are not living in Western Australia, let's say you are from Victoria and you want to apply to uh, Western Australia, you can still apply under Schedule 2. And graduates, of course, they get more preference uh, uh, because of because they have already lived there for two years. Now, these are uh, the occupations on the graduate stream. Okay. 
Now coming towards Canberra, so ACT. Now uh, ACT has a minimum requirement that you must uh, be living and working for at least six months and work has to be minimum 35 hours per week and your nominated occupation has to be on the ACT critical list. These are some minimum requirements and then you have to submit ACT metrics. Now metrics points are calculated uh, on the basis of your uh, years of study, your residence, your English, your partner skills, the level of work you are doing, the occupation that you have, and if you are running a small business, so you can get points in all those categories uh, if you are in Canberra. For 491, you do not have to show full time work experience. You, you can be eligible even if you work for 20 hours per week in any field, and it must be at least for three months, uh, and it has to be continuous. That's the main criteria. Now, and again, your occupation has to be on the ACT critical skills list. Now, um, a lot of applicants do ask that if they have for minimum eligibility, do they have to work in their nominated occupation? Answer is no, you can work in any field. However, if you work in your own field for at least minimum 20 hours per week, you can get 20 extra points after three months of work. So it's highly recommended uh, for, for you to work in your nominated occupation so you can have high points on ACT metrics. Now, these are the few occupations that are on uh, ACT list. So coming to Victoria, now Victoria had, uh, of course, a different. Uh, uh, so they uh, announced last year that they are. Uh, they will uh, be sponsoring applicants in critical sectors and later on that year they uh, included us, uh, you know. Uh, workforce current workforce skills pathway now to be eligible for either 190 or 491. Your occupation has to be in these sectors. So teaching does not come into those sectors, so they will you can go under current workforce skills pathway where if you are living and working in Victoria in your nominated occupation. Now, in this case, they opened early childhood teachers. OK, so if you are an early childhood teacher living and working in Victoria, you can submit a registration of interest. Now, after submitting registration of interest, you have to wait for the invitation. Once invited, that's when you can lodge your visa. So. Uh, and for 491, you must be working in the regional area. South Australia, uh, today they, you know, uh, they have also, as, as I told you earlier, that most of the states are in process of updating their requirements. So South Australia also is in process of doing the same, but their general requirements or the last requirements are you can generally apply through, you know, talent and innovators program. You can apply through working stream or you can apply through graduate stream. Now under working stream, generally you have to work in your nominated or closely related occupation for 12 months in Adelaide or six months in outer regional of South Australia. For graduate pathway, someone who has completed at least one year of study, which is basically they have uh, one year of study and it should be at least it should cover at least 50 percent of their entire course. They can ap uh, apply through graduate pathway. Now the advantage of going through graduate pathway is that some you can get work experience exemption if you have, uh, you know, if your GPA is six or more for 190, and you can get uh, work experience exemption if your GPA is CGPA is above five, and you uh, if you don't have that high grades in your uh, qualification. You can go and uh, you can work for three months in your field and can become eligible for 190. Now, these requirements can go, you know, let's say 12 to 18 months or 6 to 12 months, but generally for South Australia, requirements are around the same. For 491, uh, in addition to that, you have an option of living and working in outer region in any field. You can work in any field for 12 months and you can apply under uh, uh, through uh, for 491. Or of course, if you have job in your own field, you can uh, apply anyways. Then uh, or you can apply through talent and innovators program, which uh, uh, South Australia has currently in place. Now occupations that were in the list again, same thing. So most of the occupations are there on the list, so which shows that there is a demand of teachers across all states in Australia. Now Queensland. For Queensland, you don't have to. So the minimum requirement is that you must be living and working there for at least six months in your nominated occupation. Again, they need full time work experience. 
So uh, you once you have completed six months work, you have to submit uh, UI and you should also have a 12 months ongoing contract or uh, uh, with, with the employer showing that you will have that job for another 12 months. For 491, same requirement is reduced to three months, but you it has to be in your nominated occupation and you still need a contract. The only difference, uh, the one of the differences that you can, you have to work in regional Queensland to qualify for 491. Now they have a graduate pathway as well, in which if you are doing masters, they uh, can, uh, you can apply for 190 or 491 even with job contract. Now all the occupations are still uh, in their list as well. Now last is NSW. Uh, now NSW is still in process of updating their requirements, but a few of the requirements that were there last time that you, if you are off, so they opened it for offshore as well uh, last year for few occupations, but for 190, uh, if you are residing in Australia, you must be currently residing in NSW. Okay. That is number one requirement and you must have either genuine job or continuous job uh, uh, or genuine job in your nominated occupation or uh, in, in, in NSW or you have lived for past three months in NSW. That's when you become eligible for 190. Now on top of that, they have occupation list. Uh, NSW do invite applicants on the basis of their occupation list. Then preference is given to applicants with higher points and they look into English and your overall work experience as well. For subclass 491, NSW had three streams. Stream one is was for applicants who are living and working in regional NSW. Now this work is in nominated occupation. So in this case, we are talking about teaching. Stream two is for applicants who have completed two year study from regional uh, uh, NSW and stream three was open to anyone whose occupation is open in regional NSW. So they allowed applicants to apply from other states or regions as well under stream three. Now, we don't have uh, much updates on uh, most of the states yet, but uh, you can uh, you know, join other sessions which we are having uh, in particular to, uh, we are having in particular to states or uh, specific regions. Uh, we will have those uh, sessions uh, in, in coming days. So I will be presenting NSW requirements for NSW in detail in that session. Now uh, that's all from my side. Uh, uh, now uh, as Varinder told in her, uh, you know, uh, while she was ending, we are giving giveaways. Uh, if you share, uh, if you, you know, share uh, about this, uh, if you tag us at Aussie's group or Aussie's conclave, uh, you share that we, we are giving some giveaways which you can. Uh, I'll be sharing that on my screen as well. Uh, yes, here even uh, Nihal mentioned that. So uh, uh, you can see the chat box. So here you okay. need to tag us. Or oh, tag all this group or all this conclave 2022. Okay, so yeah, so you can uh, you know just follow that and uh, as we discussed, we are have we have some exciting giveaways like including free consultation uh, etc. So you can find links for those in chat box and you'll be able to uh, you know go through that. Now we will take questions uh, quickly. Varinder, can you have you filtered some questions for yourself? Uh, Meanwhile, I yes. have a look. Yes, uh, Ali. So here we got a question. I think we both need to answer. So it is from Hannah. Um, if I have a master degree in HR, but no working experience in that field and want to go back to Australia to do diploma in early childhood education, can I use master degree in HR to apply for skill migration or early childhood education diploma? So obviously you can study here diploma in early childhood, but for the skill migration or for the skill assessment, uh, Ali, can you please answer her? Yeah, so look, uh, if you. Uh, if you do, I, I, I assume you are talking about graduate diploma here because that's uh, she, the... she mentioned diploma in early childhood education. It's not a graduation uh, graduate diploma, but she has completed degree in HR. And she's asking if you can use that masters to get skill assessment so, for the early uh, childhood. Uh, yeah, so. Look, so there are if you have done graduate, if you do graduate diploma in childhood teaching after 
HR or any bachelor's, let's say if your bachelor's is three years, plus you do one year of teaching qualification, which has to be higher level. So it cannot be a diploma. It has to be a higher level study. It can be a graduate yes. diploma, can be a master's. Then yes, you can apply for skills assessment. If you uh, and you also have to meet uh, English requirements as uh, discussed. Now there is another question related to similar to uh, that one. So they have done bachelor's of accounting and yes. now they are planning to do graduate diploma. OK, so I believe Hannah was also referring to graduate diploma. Now even in that case. Uh, uh, same thing, so you can do it from Victoria. As I said in Victoria, your occupation early childhood uh, education uh, is open. Once you complete your study, you get skills assessment. Of course, you'll have to get registration with Victoria as well. And then if you start working, you can lodge ROI and you can be invited from Victoria for 190 or 491, depending on your points and uh, where you are living or working. You can apply to other states as well, uh, this thing, uh, including Western Australia schedule two. And if NSW or any other state starts sponsoring applicants living in another state, you can look for those options too. So I believe uh, that has been answered. Uh, Tanvi, you you mentioned that your question is also similar. So uh, I believe you have got answer to your question too. Now, uh, private tutor. So Ramesh, I'm not sure what exactly are you referring to, but uh, with occupation list uh, for private tutor, again, uh, if you know, you'll you'll have to get because of this occupation you'll have to get either state or region to sponsor you. So now I'm not sure which changes are you talking about. If it is skills assessment, generally requirements are similar and VETES is do assessment for these. And if you are talking about state and regional sponsorship options, uh, you know there are no most of the change uh, states haven't announced changes yet. Now, so. Uh, Dasni has asked what are the best states to apply for PR and early childhood, early childhood teacher. So uh, Dasni, uh, my answer will be that of course, uh, you know, all almost all the states as we discussed are sponsoring your occupation. OK, depending on your profile, like how many points uh, you can get because NSW look for high. For example, NSW looks for high points. Can you get a full time job? Do you have full working rights or not? Now with all that, all states have some sort of options for you. Few states. You can get it with two years study. Other states you can get with six months of full time work or for region like NSW. You can even get after three months of part time work in your own field. So it depends on what your overall profile is, but all the states I have discussed, you can you know see which one matches you the best. Now. Uh, uh, I can answer one question. There is a question from Matthew. Yeah. So he is saying I have a master's in maths from India uh, that I completed in 2019, but have no work experience. Can I do master's in teaching so that I can be a secondary teacher? If yes, which universities will be good? Uh, yes, Matthew, you can definitely do master's in teaching uh, or uh, secondary education as well. There will be no issues at all. And uh, for the universities, I can say that if you want to uh, because you didn't uh, mention the preferred state. So I can say that in Victoria, if you want to study, you can study in uh, Swinburne University. You can study in Victoria University, uh, Australian Catholic University, or uh, you can study in Latrobe University or in um, South Australia. You can study in Flinders University in Tasmania. You can study in University of Tasmania in ACT. You can study in University uh, University of Canberra. And in Western Australia, there is Curtin University, University of Western Australia and Murdoch University. Sorry, in ACT, you can study in University of Canberra. By mistake, I said University of Western Australia. And uh, so in Northern Territory, you can study in uh, Charles Darwin University. So these are the universities who are providing masters of teaching uh, for secondary education. And uh, there are attractive scholarships as well offered by the university, but it depends uh, what is your GPA uh, in your master's in mathematics in India. So on the basis of that, you can try in the same subject uh, to meet the entry criteria or you can try in the different subjects. You will definitely get admission. There will be no issues and it depends again on um, the gap of study as well because you have mentioned that uh, you finished your qualification in 2019, but you didn't mention that 
uh, what you are doing since 2019, as you have mentioned that you don't have any sort of work experience. So your admission will totally depend on uh, uh, on this gap as well. And uh, there is one more question that is from Fatima. She is asking what courses are best for teaching in Western Australia. So for the teaching, you will only find uh, bachelor's or master's or for graduate diploma as Ali discussed in the presentation for uh, skill assessment. You need to do graduate diploma, bachelor or master's only. There is no other way to uh, do it on the basis of diploma or other sort of courses and uh, all of the courses are available in Western Australia except graduate diploma and would a BSc and MSc from Indian University be considered for entry to Masters of Teaching program? Yes, Fatima. So regardless of your background, you can study Masters of Teaching here in Australia. It doesn't matter uh, whatever you have studied previously. So it just depends with very few profiles, like if you have completed uh, uh, qualification in IT, right? So then universities, they want to get some, uh, they want you to do some sort of prerequisites to meet the entry requirements. But as you have mentioned that you have done BSc and MSc, there will be no issues. You can get direct entry into, uh, into Masters of Teaching course. And here I can say I'm an ad hoc teacher, uh, but I doubt they will give me an experience letter. It, is it really necessary now? So it depends uh, on your gap as well, because if you have gap in your studies, then universities, they don't take this sort of students. So if it will be gap, then obviously there will be issues. They will ask for the experience letter. But if there will be no gaps, there will be no issues at all. So I will move to next question. So you can look for questions. Meanwhile, I can answer, but we have got many questions. Okay. So. Let's you know uh, you can uh, because let's try to we will try to answer as many questions as possible. Sure. But everyone, you know, uh, just be where we have we are uh, we have time constraint because we have other session starting soon. So uh, uh, this me has asked uh, about teaching. Uh, 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 question similar to what I've answered already. So regarding if they are in uh, they do teaching from. Uh, Victoria or uh, do they have PR options? Yes, you have PR options, but uh, because early childhood teaching is in the list. Now uh, someone has asked that my friend is IELTS teacher in India and then BA. She can apply for PR. Look, so they have to get skills assessment first. Now in order to get skills assessment for BA, and now they should have four years full study, one year teaching study. That should uh, that one year so BA can be generally one year. If it is one year, it should have at least 45 days of supervised teaching in it plus English. So if all the requirements are met, then they can get skills assessment. Otherwise, they will not get skills assessment. Now. Uh, uh, other question is uh, if you get this has asked if you get a job uh, uh, as early childhood teacher in regional uh, does it partner has to be uh you know get job in that uh region no look so this me uh, ideally they don't have to get job they are not required to work on 491 so you as a main applicant uh, is required to work no they must be living and working in regional only for example if they move to city or they want to work in melbourne or sydney or brisbane they cannot but for other regions they can but we do however we do recommend you to uh, you know, abide by your commitment, which is that you have you you should live and work in same region which has sponsored you. Now, um, quickly, So uh, the bunker has asked like IELTS band scoring uh, is sufficient uh, or not. So look, IELTS is there. It has to be there uh, unless you are exempted uh, as discussed. If you don't have IELTS uh, and you have four years study from Australia or other countries like uh, as mentioned, yes, you can get exemption for IELTS. However, your qualification has to meet the criteria. If your qualification is not meeting the criteria, they will you will not uh, you uh, you will not get skills assessment and the criteria is as, as I discussed it should have at least 45 days of supervised teaching in it. 
it's better but before you start a course you can check through ATSL website if that course particular course is accredited or not if it is not accredited then do check with one of our uh, migration or education consultants they can uh, see that if that will meet the requirement for skills assessment so uh, urbi uh, sheik has uh, asked a question regarding part time work experience look so in order to claim points work experience has to be minimum 20 hours per week if it is not 20 hours per week your experience cannot be counted towards skilled migration okay so fatima curtin university i think fatima your uh, uh, Vrinder has answered your question now. And the punker your question has also been answered by our uh, one of our team members. So just that it's 45 days of supervised teaching uh, rather than 42, I think so, but they can confirm. Uh, yes, for the Fatima, uh, I can answer this question. I didn't answer it. So for Curtin Uni Master of Teaching, since I have BSc and MSc Chemistry from India, which would be better primary or secondary education. Uh, so obviously, Fatima, you can study anything. Uh, you can go for the secondary education. That will be better. Uh, but for the PR purposes, if Ali, you can explain if there will be any scope for primary teacher because early childhood. Look, uh, yeah, there so is. primary school teacher yes. is on the list, but generally it's in short term list. So I yeah. recommend occupations like early childhood teacher or uh, secondary school teacher or other you know special needs teachers because they are all on long term list. So preference is that, but still if you do a primary school teacher, but then we'll have to, uh, you know, uh, make sure that the state that you are doing it from your occupation is available there. My recommendation is always to go with a long occupation, which is on the long term list. Now Anna has similar question about secondary school teacher. So Anna, yes, uh, I, I, I have shown you the list for different states. No, every state has different occupation lists. So few of the states they haven't updated their occupation list. So that's why I haven't mentioned all occupations there. But secondary school teacher is generally in demand across all states in Australia. So if you are planning to do that, it's uh, I would say it's a good course that can lead you to PR, but make sure that you do it from a state where your occupation is available. Uh, then. Could you please just. So Anna, I believe your question is answered now. OK, so someone has asked a question related to uh, childhood uh, learning manager. So uh, occupation is child care center manager. That's in the list now, but you have to work for three years as a child care center manager. And with that, it becomes really sometimes it becomes really hard to gain that experience in Australia. It's possible, but it's a long way. So generally, that's why we recommend you to do a course that is accredited by AITSL, like for example, teaching rather than general education or uh, a diploma course. OK, so you can do bachelor's or higher level course in early childhood teaching that will lead you to skills assessment as a teacher and you can apply for a teacher. You don't need work experience to get skills assessment in that case, but for childhood uh, child, care, uh, child, uh, child care center manager, you need three years work experience as manager, which can become sometimes it will be really hard for you to, you know, gain that much experience in Australia. So Ramesh state requirements, most of the states will be updating their requirements in July or August. So, you know, we will have more uh, details uh, soon. And uh, of, like for you, you can, I think uh, for your case, I think you can look for options in South Australia generally because they have generally more uh, access to more occupations. You can also look for uh, if you have a job contract or offer, you can look for other states such as Tasmania, Northern Territory or Queensland. Hannah is asking for the duration of graduate diploma. So Hannah, it will be for a year, the graduate diploma of early childhood. The duration is one year only. So uh, Kashish has asked uh, in NSW, don't we need three years experience? Uh, Kashish, so we are waiting, as I said earlier, we are waiting for NSW to update their requirements. Now you don't, so three years experience is not required for all occupations. Only if they mark that your occupation needs three years experience, only in that case you will need three years experience. So wait for NSW to announce their new list and requirements and we will know uh, what exactly are they asking for all teachers? And Dasni has asked, uh, 
491 uh, uh, question related 491 in Victoria. How long does it take? Look, this it depends on your points. It depends on competition. How many number of applicants are applying? 491 was a bit hard last year. We've seen because Victoria had less allocation for 491. Now, if they get more allocation, we can see uh, that moving fast. But for now, wait periods are long, especially if you have less points. Uh, there is one question from Navinda. She is saying she has done Bachelor of Business from Swinburne University, and she uh, she is asking if she can do graduate diploma. Yes, Navinda, you can do graduate diploma. There will be no issues. You will easily get uh, admission into graduate diploma. And even if you have completed this Bachelor of Business within last two years, your uh, entry criteria will be easy. The requirement of English language will be waived off if you want to go into it. So I will drop my phone number in the chat box. So if you have any sort of personal question you want to inquire about education, you can call me on that number or you can leave message or you can WhatsApp me on that number and I will answer your questions. Uh, the bunker regarding social, uh, you know, so regarding special needs teacher question. Yes, it's in the list, but we have to see what study you have done. If your study does not meet requirement of AITSL, you will not get skills assessment. If you don't get skills assessment, you cannot apply for PR. So it's first thing is that if your qualification matches to, uh, uh, you know, if it meets the requirement of AITSL, if it doesn't, then you cannot use it for skills assessment as a special needs teacher. Uh, there is a question from Krishna. I've done masters of secondary teaching. Uh, in NSWS secondary school teacher from last six months, I thought we need. So Kashish, again, I have answered uh, that question initially. I haven't this uh, because NSW is still in the process of updating their requirements. Once they do update, uh, we will know. But currently there are no requirements from NSW. OK, so we have to. I cannot say that they will put three years experience requirement in the future or not. Once list is updated, we will have I can you know uh, we, we can let you know that what the requirements are, but if for your occupation there is a three years experience requirement, then of course NSW is not a good option for you. Then you can look for other states, for example, Western Australia, South Australia, Queensland, Tasmania, Northern Territory, all the other states that I have discussed. So uh, primary school teacher uh, from offshore uh, look so you can look for uh, options uh, where your occupations are open now will have to go in detail, but then all the states, uh, for example, your uh, occupation can be open in South Australia. It can be there in Western Australia. It can be, uh, you know, you can apply in ACT, but for all those states, there are certain requirements that you must meet uh, other than having occupation on the list. So you can get in touch with us, one of our team, and you can get uh, advice in detail related to that. But yes, a primary school teacher is in the list. You can look for 491 or 190 option from offshore. Now, because they have started opening for uh, applicants uh, post COVID, they have started opening. States have started opening uh, options for occupations. Now, uh, bachelors while onshore, which course should I take? OK, so look, Ankit, your question is very general. Uh, we are looking, we, this is teaching. Uh, seminar for teaching. You can look for teaching courses. You can look for social work courses. Of course, this session was for teaching, so I can recommend you to take teaching course as well, which is definitely has many PR prospects. And Varinder uh, is dropping her details. You can reach out to her. She can, you know, explain you if you meet uh, admissions eligibility criteria or not for that course. Anna, uh, I would suggest you to wait for a couple of weeks, see what requirements, uh, you know, uh, uh, Victoria will update the requirement, NSW will update the requirement, South Australia. So most of the states have, have to update their requirements. Now, if your occupation is still not in the added into the Victoria list, you can move to other states, let's say Western Australia, okay? Or, or you can lodge UI for Western Australia from Victoria, but you'll have to provide a job contract from Western Australia once you are invited. So I will suggest you, you can consider Western Australia. You can consider NSW if uh, they don't add three years experience requirement with your occupation. Uh, so, or Tasmania, or there are all other states where your occupation is currently being sponsored. So I would advise you to look on those, but just wait for a couple of uh, three, four weeks or maybe a month 
uh, by the time most of the states will announce their requirements. Hannah, your question, I believe uh, Varinder has answered that it's one year. Uh, Ramesh, uh, it will be uh, lists will be announced generally by end of, uh, you know, like it, most of the states generally announce in July or August, so maybe a few more weeks or months. How many questions? There are a lot of questions still yet. So, uh, uh, what uh, we can do, uh, you can leave your number as well, Ali, because I think it's already 3:35. Yes, I think the session. And we will wrap up this session here, and you can also drop your number. I already dropped mine, so you can also drop your number so that uh, you can contact us, and we will definitely get back all the comments, and uh, we will definitely get back to all of you. Uh, but we are wrapping this session here and um, all of you, you will get your answers very soon from our team. I've dropped my email uh, and people who have attended so these particular uh, things, they can email me. I'll ask uh, one of our team member will be getting back to you on that. Now, uh, thank you, uh, everyone, for joining. Varinder, do you want to add anything before we finish? Ah, uh, yes. So I would like to say thank you to everyone. Thanks, everyone, for joining this session. And I also have dropped my number and email ID. So if you want to discuss your case, you can contact us uh, and you can discuss your case, and we will definitely help you out. So thank you, everyone, for joining our Conclave 2022.